I've read the Mueller report. I uh, read while I was cooking dinner, and I'm going to go through this thing. It's both part one and part two. Um, I'm going to summarize it a good deal, and feel free to read it yourself. I've identified page numbers uh, and section numbers for this information that I'm pulling straight out of the, the report. I'm going to try not to inject too much of my own opinion into it. So the first thing I identified is uh, Russian social media influence. And this is on page 14. They say that the Russians tried to influence the election through social media. We, we know this is true. Uh, Robert Mueller served indictments for people who will never see a courtroom. Uh, it was found that thousands of dollars were spent on Facebook ads both pro-Hillary, anti-Hillary, pro-Trump, anti-Trump. Um, we know this. We know that bots were used to try and sway social media conversations. This is not new information, um, but it's being confirmed publicly and for the record by the special counsel, so perhaps it has some more credibility than it would otherwise have. Russian hacking, page 36. So... They have accepted uh, the word of a private party that was hired by the DNC to investigate the servers. So CrowdStrike concluded that the Russians accessed and leaked the DNC emails, and the FBI accepted that without conducting its own forensics examination of the server. Um, hey, the Russians hacked us. Okay, let's take a look at the server and see. No, 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 we, we already verified it uh, with CrowdStrike a company we've worked with in the past. Okay, we'll take your word for it. And then on the campaign, Hillary Clinton comes out and says that 17 intelligence agencies all verified that the Russians hacked the server. Okay, no mention of the upload speed, no mention of the download speed. So you wouldn't be able to do a remote transfer of that many files at the speed, at the bit rate that this file was downloaded. No mention of that. They accept the conclusions of CrowdStrike. WikiLeaks, page 44. Um, they published stolen emails. Again, nothing new. Trump campaign and the emails, page 51. He's pumped. The campaign showed interest and excitement regarding email release after Assange had stated he had emails relating to Hillary Clinton on 12 June 2016. Again, are you surprised by this? Hey, we have emails that make Hillary look bad. The president's excited about that. His campaign's excited about that. The prospect of having access to these emails. I don't think anyone is surprised by that. Russian contacts with the campaign, page 66. Various members of the campaign had contacts with the Russians. Yep, Russia's a superpower. No members of the campaign were found to have been acting on behalf of the Russians. So when we say that Carter Page is a Russian agent, Michael Flynn's a Russian agent, George Papadopoulos is a Russian agent, there is nothing to substantiate those claims. Robert Mueller looked into those claims for two and a half years and nothing. Campaign finance, another thing that's on everyone's mind. This is page 183. There is no evidence sufficient to charge a violation of campaign finance laws. I know that's a huge surprise, right? That someone running in a presidential race where he knows he is going to be made into a villain, uh, is careful with his finances. Someone who has made billions of dollars has a professional taking care of his finances. That's a huge surprise to me as well. Uh, though, with regard to campaign finance, again, that was page 183 where it starts, I would encourage you to go and download this document and read page 184 with the Clinton Foundation in mind. The money that came from Qatar, the money that came from warlords in Africa, the money that came from who knows where. Uh, Bill Clinton was paid $500,000 for a one-hour speech in Moscow. Hillary Clinton received, 
I think, $47 million through the Clinton Foundation a day after Rosatom was authorized to acquire Uranium One. Maybe that's worth looking into, but I don't know. Mueller uh, didn't seem that interested in it. Obstruction. Page 192. Thank you. That's why you need a wife, losers. <laughs> Papadopoulos lied about meeting with Joseph Misfood, who offered him dirt on Hillary Clinton. Um, who is Joseph Misfood? Flynn lied about meeting with Kislyak. Who is Kislyak? Cohen lied about a Trump organization deal for a... Uh, a Trump Tower in Moscow. So it's said in this report, um, I wish they would cite the sources for this stuff, but that they were still in discussions with the Russian government as late as June 2016 for a potential Trump Tower project in Moscow, Trump Tower Moscow. So by this time, the business had been handed off to Michael Cohen, who was acting president of the Trump organization while President Trump was then candidate Trump campaigning. So Cohen lied about uh, that deal. Volume two. <clears throat> this is the executive summary. Trump expressed skepticism about whether the Russians had anything on Hillary and his team tried to find out. Not a surprise, right? So if you are running a presidential campaign, you're running a race against someone who is so deep in politics that people kill themselves if they find evidence of a crime that you committed. Is it a surprise that someone would be excited at the prospect of having some dirt, some form of opposition research, something that would give them a, a competitive edge against someone like that? No. So when the news comes out that Julian Assange and WikiLeaks have these stolen emails that were leaked from the DNC, he's skeptical. He publicly expresses skepticism, doesn't put much stock in it. On the side says, hey, guys, go and look into this. If there's something there, I want it. And so his team goes to try and find out if there actually is any dirt to be had coming from WikiLeaks. So there's a lot of redacted information in this thing, and that's that's the investigation about Roger Stone and his connection with, uh, I think it's Jerome Corsi and Julian Assange. So these are people who know people who know people, and they're trying to access this information ahead of time so that they can invest in it or not. Either Either we're wasting our time chasing nothing or we're not. You can look up who those people are, Shane. Um, read George Papadopoulos' tweets about Joseph Misfoot and who set up those meetings. Also in this executive summary, um, the president denied he was working on Trump Tower Moscow while Michael Cohen had been working on it. Uh, I think I mentioned that already, but it's mentioned again in this executive summary. Trump asked Comey to lay off Michael Flynn because he's a good guy. Trump urged Sessions to re-enter the Russia investigation following his recusal. Trump wanted Comey to make public that he was not investigating the president, so he had been told by James Comey personally that he was not under investigation. The president wanted him to make that public, then-candidate Trump, wanted him to make that public. Trump then fired Comey after uh, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein recommended that Comey be fired for leaking information to the press. Uh, so I, I, don't, I don't know why that's a big deal either. Um, he directed McGahn to call Sessions and tell him there was a conflict of interest in the special counsel, and McGahn resigned instead of doing that. He, he refused to go and say that there was a conflict of interest and that Sessions needed to dissolve the special counsel. Uh, he resigned. And he later instructed McGahn to lie about this. So there's the kicker. 
if you're if you want to talk about obstruction, that's going to be the focus. So I suspect that's what the media is going to zero in on, that he later instructed McGahn to lie about having been told to dissolve. Uh, well, to lie about having been instructed to ask Sessions to dissolve the special counsel. Uh, as hilarious as that sounds, but that is an exertion of his authority. And if he is trying to close down an investigation where there is a crime to be found, that's obstruction. So I'll get to that in a minute. We'll see if there's a crime to be found. Trump also asked Sessions to say that the investigation was unfair. Trump asked that a statement be edited to remove Don Jr.'s name and the media complied. So it doesn't list uh, what media organization or what journalist took this statement, but the statement read that Don Jr. had been uh, asked for a meeting or something like that. And the president asked that they remove Don Jr.'s name and write person of interest or person X or something like that. This journalist complied with that. Trump asked Sessions to take a look at Clinton and that he wouldn't interfere and he wanted to be treated fairly. So he has a private meeting with Sessions in the White House. He says, hey, I'm not going to interfere with this investigation, though I think you should also take a look at Hillary Clinton and her campaign. There might be some crimes there and I'm not going to interfere in your investigation. I just want to be treated fairly. This is part of uh, the executive summary again. So page 15, volume two, the definition of an obstruction is given quite clearly along with the case precedent for it. I'm not going to go through all that precedent. And they also lay out the legal defense for application, page 159. And then the conclusion, uh, page 182, here's the moneymaker, what everyone wants. Excuse me. In obstruction cases, a subject engages in obstruction to cover up a crime. In this instance, there was no crime. So there cannot have been obstruction per its legal definition. This forces the consideration of other possible motives, uh, which would have to be speculative. I would have to say, well, he thought that maybe they were going to find a crime or thought maybe they were going to put him in a perjury trap like they did Flynn and Gates. He thought maybe they would uh, zero in on some tax rule that he broke 10 years ago. You you have to you have to ascribe intent and a, a prosecution counsel is not going to go for that. They're not going to make speculative arguments because the judge will throw it out. And they outline two phases of of the president, the two faces of Trump. The first phase is where the president had been repeatedly told he was not under investigation and he had a a characteristic behavior during that time. And then the second phase, he becomes, he's, he's made aware that he is the subject of an investigation for obstruction. And then he becomes hostile. He starts, hey, Sessions, what are you doing? Hey, Rosenstein, you need to shut this down. There's a conflict of interest. Go investigate the Clintons, all that stuff. So phase one and phase two, the two faces of Trump. Um, I don't see much here. So I suspect the media, like I said, is going to zero in on this McGahn uh, being instructed to lie. Um, I don't know that that's illegal. And per the definition of obstruction, nothing meets that criteria because obstruction is me trying to conceal a crime. If there's no crime for me to conceal, I'm not obstructing anything uh, per, per its legal definition. So the media is going to zero in on that, McGann. Second, um, they've, they've already jumped ship on the collusion idea. This was known a month ago um, when they started saying, well, maybe the Mueller report isn't going to be what we hoped it would be. Maybe he's not going to be impeached. Nancy Pelosi starts saying, hey, you know, impeachment's not an option on the table at this time. You knew, that, you knew where this was going. Everyone knew where this was going if they've been paying attention. So shift back to tax returns. Um, or maybe they didn't go thoroughly enough into possible campaign finance violations, but that certainly would have been included. They, they interrogated Michael Cohen for days. 
uh, Michael Cohen would have been Trump's money man. And if those payments to the hookers for their silence were coming from campaign funds and not personal funds, obvious com- campaign finance violation. And that would be included in this report under campaign finance. So it's down to taxes plus orange man bad. We'll see.